Just got back from the flea market and I made some sweet finds. Guy was selling these for $10 a piece. I asked him if I could get both for 18 and he gave me a deal. I always like old German tan tools. And this one was a German tan. I believe these are called like shingling or lathe hatchets, if I'm not mistaken. But it looked like something I could turn into like a combat tomahawk. This one, I just looked up on eBay, the German tan one. And they're selling it on there for $60. So I think I'm going to just hang on to it the way it is. It's got its original handle on there. Even little remnants of the original sticker, so... I'm going to let this one be the way it is, but we're going to work on this one today. It I've kind of blackened out where I'm going to grind off. Let's take all that out and this out here. And then back here, I think I'll thin this into a point. Let's start on the easy part. Now, you can blow through this real quick and ruin the temper and the heat treat and all that good stuff. Or you can take your time, turn it into something special and save the heat treat. All right, here goes nothing. You don't want to let it get too hot. It's nice and easy. Give you guys a little bit of an example here. Show you what you do not want to happen. Right here. See how that you're getting that discolorment? You don't want that. That has uh, ruined in that little spot there the temper and the heat treat. That's why you just got to go, just stay on for not even a second. It gets to where you just pop it on for a second, pull off sponge. Pop it on for a second, pull off sponge. But, it's a long process, but then you don't have to reheat treat. You don't have to re-temper. 
and it's very rewarding if you have the patience when you get it done. Well, I'm going to continue on. Kind of judge how hot it's getting using that flap disc to uh, when the water starts to evaporate off the side of the metal, and that's usually when I stop and add a little more water. You're not going to burn your axe head up as quick using the flap disc as you are the cutting wheel. Till you start getting thin, the thicker the steel, the less likely, in my experience, it's going to uh, screw up the temper get too hot too quick. Once it gets thinner, that's when it usually happens. We're gonna spin this guy around. Work on this side. Let's see here. There we go, that'll work. All right, on to the back. That's a pretty nice hammer back there, but I want to kind of turn it into a triangle point. Bring it to a point, a little more destructive.
All right, here she is. From this to this. What? Hmm? What's burgles want to do? What's the burgle want to do? You want to go get in the river? Hmm? You get restless. We haven't done anything fun all day. Hmm. Is that what it is? What do you want to do, my big boy? All right, we'll go soon. We'll stink her butt. Do it, ounces. Eight point five ounces. Half a pound. Perfect. Perfect. I gotta carve a handle for it. Oh, big boy. Why don't you get cooled off, Burgles? I know it's hot. Good. So, time to carve a handle for this. I'm gonna use some locusts. This stuff is just solid. You do it right, this is some seasoned locusts. I mean, this handle will last. Not as long as this head, but, you know, pretty darn near close if you take care of it. Locust is awesome. And for this kind of tool, like where I'm not doing a lot of swinging and a whole lot of impacts, unless it was in battle or something, like, I want a strong handle on it that's going to last. And locust is extremely strong, even in a thin form. So... I figure I'm going to try and get about an 18 inch, 18 to 20 inch handle out of this. Give her a little reach. Probably about 18 inches. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to get going.
What's the matter? Easy.
Doesn't look like it because it's wonky, but it's right where I want it. Kind of comes down to is you know you can either you know go buy this head for eight dollars at a flea market and modify it an old head with some really good steel that already had a story you know do what you want to modify it the way you want and then carve yourself a handle or even just go get yourself a, a handle that's prefabricated and just hang it on that. You don't even have to carve a handle. Or you can just scratch all that and come to a guy like me. And you're going to pay a little bit of money. You're definitely going to pay a little bit of money for something like this. From me. I don't know about other people, but... Um, you know, I charge a little bit for my time. But I make it so that... You know, you can depend on it, and it's going to last. I might even sell this one. I don't know. It's kind of hard to let things go sometimes. That's more of the right length. Yeah, check this out. I'm gonna thin her out just a little more. I'll probably use a card scraper on it the rest of the way. Maybe a little bit of knife work. I'm gonna chamfer her down this uh, Little, I'm going to turn it into a slight bit of a palm swell down here, just a, a little bit. Give you just that little bit of extra purchase.
you want your kerf to be at least two-thirds down into the eye, into the head. Somebody's popping off some shots. Sunday morning in Tennessee. You don't want that ledge. You want it to be gradual, running from the axe head to the shoulders. You don't want it to be sitting on this little ledge because that creates a weak spot where it'd be easier for the handle to break. Yep. All right.
All right. Got her out past the uh, top of the eye. She's out a little bit. In there pretty tight. Come on, back her head. may not look like it, but it's right on. It's square from the blade up to the tip. Blade to the palm swell. A little bit wonky in between, real snaky. But wherever my fist is going, that blade's going, whatever direction. All right, now it's time to finish this handle off. You guys are knuckleheads. Where's Bonzo? Look at you. Bonzo! Scratched it real good. I got first aid here though. I'm gonna use a little alcohol prep pad and then put a little neosporin on it. I'd like to use some iodine, but it's just too close to his eye. I don't want to get any iodine in his eye, so you gotta be careful. But I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up now and hopefully uh, just keep an eye on it and don't let it get infected. Let me see your eye. Ah, okay. Mm, I know that burns. I'm sorry. Now let me see. Getting her cleaned up a little bit. He's like, I don't want to do that. Come here. Hey, come here. We got to get her cleaned up, baby. I know, I know. Oh. All right, that's good. Now, hey, we got one more thing and then I'll give you a treat for listening like a good boy. This is some Neosporin that doesn't have anything extra in it. It's called Simply Neosporin, which is probably better for a dog. I don't know, but we'll put some of this on there just to, uh, you know, I just wiped a little 
alcohol prep pad in there and cleaned it out a little bit. I'll put a little Neosporin on and hopefully it don't get infected. Dogs are pretty resilient. Come back. It's okay. Let me see. It's okay. I know. Just, huh? Or let me get in your eye. There we go. There you go. Let's get a little more. Man, I think you just, you almost put your eye out, mister. That was really close. You're lucky. We have to get you an eye patch. Now it's time to cool off and calm down. No more running. Okay. We don't need you getting hurt. You're just a little one. You're not built for it yet. Okay, you gotta be calm. You know, I just thought of something. Might not be a bad idea to have a little card scraper in your kit. Maybe something like, put something like this in your belt pouch. Doesn't weigh too much. Look at what it produces. Real fine. I might have to do that. Then again, I could always just use the spine of my knife to get the same effect, so. One less thing to carry, right?
you all want to get good with your knives you know when I get a new knife I'll carve something with it I did a good little bit of carving on this handle here with that William Collins belt knife hung the head using it and you know just get out there and like William Collins says go whittle on something Go whittle on a spoon. Make yourself a little spoon. Grab a branch of a pine tree that fell. It's not completely dead yet. And whittle yourself a spoon. Start by, you know, carving on tent stakes. Do a tri-stick. It'll get you better at using your knives. At least that's that worked for me. I'm not saying it'll work for you. All I can tell you is what's worked for me. But... This is coming along. I got a ways to go. I could probably leave it be the way it is, but I'm going to make it just a little bit nicer. So I'm going to keep on at it. Starting to get bit up by these bugs again. No seams. I got something for their ass. have to be extremely careful very extremely careful right here if I want to use my knife to take this I got this one layer I have one layer here I'm trying to get off and there's a little bit of a pin knot there I don't want to go too deep end up screwing myself but you see Right in here, there's just a tiny little bit of a hump I'm trying to take out. Nice and easy. Got to be extremely careful. Get one of those layers. Starts digging in, you got to stop. Slightest little bit at a time. It's almost trying to dig in too much because it's not. Got a little bit of her.
Good boys. I like to put a little rub and rub a little rubbing alcohol through there, knock the rest of the dust off, and kind of for some reason put rubbing a little rubbing alcohol along your handle before you linseed oil it kind of makes the grain pop a little more. Don't ask me why, but it's true. And it gets all that grease and grime off there before you treat it. A little special brew. My homemade mixture. Boiled linseed oil. Heated up and mixed with... Heated up and mixed with pine tar. All right, we'll let that soak in. Then we'll wipe off the ex we'll wipe off the excess. Let her soak in for, you know, sometimes I let it soak in for 12 hours and then throw another coat on. Sometimes 24, and I'll do that two or three times. Let it soak in, and then I'll uh, usually uh, rub in some beeswax. Or actually, I like using Snow Seal, what I use to treat my boots. Uh, I found that works really good. I kind of brandish that into the wood. Kind of seals it up. Gives it a little bit of grip. Makes it real nice. So. Nice and shiny. About 17 and a half. Right around 17 and a half inches, all said and done. Half ounce under a pound. Perfect. That'd be worth taking up in the mountain. Or just having it on your belt.
I will sell this axe, but it's got to be for the right price. I have an idea of what I want to make off it. Y'all have seen the video and seen how much time I put into it. Shoot me an email if you're interested and we'll talk. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you if you made it all the way through. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.